Hello everyone. Sorry I'm a second or two late. Sitting here waiting from 6.55 to 7 o'clock. It got to 6.59 and I just daydream right out into nothing. Next thing I know it's 7. So I'm going to hang around here till people come in. Today we're going to be talking about sayings. Things that people say that they just say because they heard their mom and dad say or their grandparents say or something. I went and did a little bit of research on what they meant. Hello, hey Betty. Hey Scott, Christy, Tim, Mandy, look at y'all coming in. Good job. I always like to have somebody else to hear me. So, I'm going to see if I can get in here. Make sure I'm up and running so I can watch the comments. There we go. I'm here. Uh-oh. Got to turn my noise off again. Every time I'm editing a video, I turn it on and I forget to turn it back off whenever we're doing these lives. I'm going to try to follow Mandy's method of putting a like on it. So I know that I have... Hey, Chris. I'm glad you made it. Hey, Janet K. Stevie. D. D. I got her. And thank you. Hi, hi Betty. Makes me get up off the couch. I didn't realize how much I actually sat on the couch till today. I only got 1,729 steps. Ha! That's nothing. JK getting up 12,000 a day. And here I am sitting on my laurels getting 70. I need to get outside more, people. A lot more. Hey, I do use that little uh, bicycle exercise machine on the porch. I'm up to five minutes. I know that don't sound like a lot. But you sit on that thing. Turn it for five minutes. <laughs> See how well that feels. But I am doing it. So today, first and foremost, I want to welcome the new members. We've got a couple new members since the last time we were live. So if you're here today, hello, hello. Um, <clears throat> and just want to thank each and every one of you that go through and watch my YouTube videos. I've had a big hit to my hours watch because, of course, that bedroom video I did, all those 12,000 views went off. So i got to build her back up again. So if you get a chance, just pop on over YouTube and look, watch one or two for me. Yep, any progress is good progress, Chris. I started out at two minutes when I did it on the 1st of March. I started at 1st of March because that's when my wellness planner, I set it up to go. I have a whole, this is going off onto another whole thing, but I have a whole can carry bag full of planners. I've got a regular everyday planner. I've got a garden planner. I made me an uh, election watching planner last night because I had one extra. So I made that. Watch Trump win. Yay. But anyway, I digress. But I have a whole thing full. So I said, I was keeping them out at the she shed, but then I'd need them out here, or I'd be out she shed, and they'd be out here. So I just got me a little carry bag and can carry them wherever I go. To start with this, I was talking to Timmy and Stephen and Mandy and them, and I was like, some of the things that we say, like, I'll just use this one, bite the bullet, or, um, you know, different things like that. That we say on a regular, everyday basis, that we know in our mind what we're saying, what we mean. But is that actually what it means? Or it, did it come from a different meaning back in the day? So the first one I'm going to do, I'm going to do the first ten or so that have different meanings. If you've used any of these in your lifetime, just, you know, put a little thing. I'll give you numbers one, two, three, whatever it is, and say, yeah, I've used number one or number two, whatever, which one of it is. So then that way we know everybody has you, and I'll bet every one of you has used at least one or two of these all together. Now I have one little stock here. I love these index cards. I'm going to do me a YouTube video on them. Yes, they're awesome. But I also have this whole stack that just has the meaning. 
So I'm not going to go through the whole stack, but I'll pick a few of them out, you know, whichever ones that they are. And then, you know, if you have one specific that you think I might have, have the meaning to, just put it in the comments. Yeah, Mandy, you'll love it, because it, just like with my watch and the, the number of steps that you take that you're watching, if you get on that bike and say you start out at two minutes, you think, now I could do better the next time. So I went from two minutes on last Friday up to five minutes today. That not, not seem like a lot to a lot of people, but for me who was a couch potato, that's pretty good. I'm hoping to get up to, Stevie told me he's up to 28 minutes on his. If I can get to 10 minutes every day, and keep it consistent for a month, then I'll start adding more. But I'm working my way slowly up to that 10 minutes. And then I'll just keep working on that for a month, and then they maybe add 12 minutes, and so on and so forth. So, wish me luck, guys. What I'm trying to do is tone off some of this so that when I get dressed up in that pretty little dress that Chrissy's going to get me for her wedding, it looks a little better. If not, it'll be her mommy. <laughs> Regardless. So let me catch up on this. <laughs> Leave it to you, Stevie. Leave it to you. <laughs> All right. This first one I'm going to go over with is called Turn a Blind Eye. Now, I very rarely use this one, but... The meaning is to willfully, re, a willful refusal to acknowledge a, pro, a particular reality. So if you see something and you really don't think that's what it is, like some of the politics today, they can see it right in front of their face, but they don't see it. So, um, but the reason, the backstory to this particular saying was during the battle at sea, uh, back years, I mean, like a couple hundred years ago, when they actually did their fighting on on uh, ships, said, um, during the battle at sea, his superior officer, now this is Horatio Nelson's superior officer, from the shore, flagged him to withdraw due to a large ship to fight. I mean, he was, you know, the fight, the large ship was coming in to fight him. And they, they were afraid that he would not be able to do it. He said he moved the telescope, or the, yeah, you know, the telescope, you know, one of those little things that he had from his good eye, because he was blind in one eye, from his good eye to his, or I should better tell, from his good eye to his blind eye. And he said, he just didn't see the signal. So guess what? He won the battle. So perseverance always can work if you're careful. Now, when I took on a big ship, if I was out in the middle of the ocean, I wouldn't be out in the middle of the ocean. Let's get, get real. But if I were, I don't think I would have had the brass to have done that. I really don't think so. I think he, he showed immense courage in doing it. One, he's going to have to face his superior officer because he disobeyed him. But two, he won. So which one cancels the other one out, I wonder? They didn't tell me that in the little story. Thanks, Chrissy. Yeah, I've, I've heard it before, but I'm not really... I guess you could use it more... I'm sorry, I'm asking. You could use it more and more today in the political realm, but that's not a good idea to do that. Because there's crazy stuff going on out there. Hey, Stan. How are you, buddy? Yeah, some of these have really good box sayings to them. You just say them because you've heard your parents, your grandparents, aunts, uncles, somebody on TV say them. You said, oh, that's a pretty good saying. I think I know what it means. So now, after we get done with the ones that we do, you'll know the meaning. The next one in line is White Elephant. Have you heard of the White Elephant gift? 
Well, this is something similar to that. It was a highly sacred creature in Thailand. A white elephant was. Now, when somebody would get in trouble with the king, they done something the king just absolutely did not like. Absolutely did not like. Instead of him killing them or punishing them, he would give them a white elephant. And those things were sacred over there, so that along with him giving them that wonderful gift, he made them to have to take care of it, watch over it, keep it from getting hurt, all of which become very, very expensive on the person that received that particular gift. So he just ruined them. So instead of him having to be the bad guy, he actually gave them a gift that was really, it's like somebody giving me a tractor trailer that I can't drive, and I have to pay the gas for somebody else to drive it for me in order to get me from point A to point B, and I have to do it because it's mandated by the king that I do it. I was like, okay, that would have been one good form of punishment. That king was very smart. Hi, Tina. Glad you guys are doing good. Glad you're in to visit. If you don't care, just give me a like as you come in. That would be greatly appreciated. The next one, Mom used to say this every once in a while, crocodile tears. Granddaddy used to tell, he used to put his two hands together. I don't know if Janet Kay can remember this or not. When we would get upset about something, put his hands out. Grandpa Johnson did, I think, called Cry Me a River. And that was just simply meaning if you was going to cry anyway, fill her hands up with tears. Because they weren't, they weren't worried about it. You were okay. But crocodile tears is a display of superficial or false sorrow. It derives from the meaning of a medieval belief that crocodiles shed tears of sadness while killing and consuming their prey. Well, I've never seen a crocodile. I've never seen it kill anything. I've never seen it eat anything. However, it could be true. I I won't just, because I've never seen it, doesn't mean it ain't true. That's, that's the biggest thing, just because you haven't seen it. I'm trying to catch up with Chrissy's comment here. <laughs> yeah, that but yeah. Yeah, Janet, it cry me a handful, yeah. Hey Brian. Yeah. Well, they do have what they call white elephant game where you just buy not really the best of the best gifts and you Somebody might get that particular gift in amongst of a whole bunch of other gifts, and it's called the white elephant gift. Yeah, I used to do that, Mandy. I did. Cry me a river, because that's what we was told when we was younger. Next one is just the word die hard. You ever heard of somebody saying, oh, wow, that, that person's a diehard? Usually a description of a person with a strong dedication to a particular set of beliefs. And people could say that about me because Timmy will tell you, and I'm not too ashamed to put, when I get my head set on something, it's like, a, it's like turning the Titanic in Mill Creek. It doesn't happen, happen easily. But if I can slow down long enough to listen to what he's trying to tell me, most generally we're saying the same thing. <laughs> and we do that a lot. <clears throat> it said, in the 1700s, the saying described condemned men who struggled the longest when being executed by hanging. I don't know if I'd want, if I knew I was going to die anyway, I, I guess you would, because you know, hanging on to life is your main thing. 
You know, no matter when you're getting ready to, to pass. It's, it's just what you're instinctively to do. Now, if you could get your face mixed into it and know that if something happens to you, you're going to a better place, but those few minutes probably would not never be good for anybody. The next one we got is called Resting on Your Laurels. Now, I have heard this said. I don't know. The girls would, would know whether or not I've ever said it or not, but I've heard it. it. But it says, from the time of Apollo, which I'm assuming was some god at some point, who depict, who's depicted with a crown of laurel leaves, the plant became a symbol of status and achievement, giving it a wreath form to the victorious athletes of the uh, Pythian Games so they could, could bask in the glory of the past. So that was pretty cool because, because it was um, a status symbol. If you won a particular one of those games, they'd give you a wreath that you could hang on your wall and say, look at me. It's like the medals that they give them today on the Olympics. You can have those medals and say, I did it once. I might be 90 years old, but when I wasn't, look what I did. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, <laughs> that that sums me up in heartbeat, Mandy. But that resting on your laurels is pretty good. Now, you know, that's not exactly what the description I would mean. If you resting on your laurels, mean to me would mean you're being lazy. But to them, it means you you have a sign of accomplishment. You've done something in your life. The next one is Read the Right Act. And I have said this on more than one occasion about different things being read the right act. <laughs> because sometimes I have to be read the right act, so I'll calm down long enough in order to understand the situation. I'm really quick, quick to get um, upset. And if you say anything about it, I'm quick to get embarrassed. And when the embarrassment hits in, it is so hard to get me to even listen to what you got to say. I mean, really, it is. I, I've done some merely major soul searching over the last few years. But this says angry parents might tell their children off. Like, you know, I've had a few times that myself. And it was, it, it, the Riot Act was a real document which was often recited aloud to angry mobs. British could label a group of 12 or more a threat to peace. Often a part was read to the groups to disperse them. Part, this is what they read. Disperse themselves and peaceably depart to their habitation. That remind anybody of anything? Just say it. You know what I'm talking about? Put it in the comment section. Number six. Cool, Mandy. You're keeping up with them. Good job, baby. Next one is paint the town red. This started out. What we realize, what we think of it as now is everybody going out and having a really good time, probably coming in drunk and laying down in bed, but they went out and they had themselves a good time. This is a story about, it says, one night the Marquis of Waterloo led a group of friends on a night of drinking. There was vandalism, broken windows, and the painting of a toll gate, and the doors of several homes and a swan and a statue painted red. So that seriously, even though we don't do the vandalism part when we go out and have a good time, people do still paint the town red when they're out. The next one is running amok. 
It describes wild or erratic behavior. I've had a few grandkids and kids that run amok every once in a while. And I'm sure when I was younger, Mom would have said the same thing about us. The original was a description of a mental disorder that people would run amok and sully forth from their house. Kill the person or persons supposed to have injured the amok. So I guess that was a creature of some sort. And anybody that attempts to impede his passage. Once thought to be the result of the possession of evil spirits. Also, Chrissy can find out for this for me or she may know herself. It's supposed to be also in psychiatric mag uh, manuals. So there was actually a thing called running amok. It's a mental disorder of some sort. But the original one was that somebody crazy would go out and kill somebody. The next one has three different sayings which all mean the same thing. <clears throat> it's called by and large. Okay. Um. Large was used to mean a ship, they're all nautical things, a ship that was sailing with the wind at its back. The by part of it meant that it was traveling into the wind. It was facing the wind as it was, uh, as it was going. The by and large meant traveling the seas in any and all directions relative to the wind. Also used is all things considered for the most part. So, I mean, that's all. Yeah. I didn't know it had nautical meaning. But it, that's what it says. Large was used to mean a ship that had the wind at its back. And the by part, full and lo, full, or by part, meant um, it was traveling into the wind. Hmm. That's interesting. I, I know I've used by and large before, but I didn't use it in any of that. Pit. I was just meaning, by the way, um, all things considered, and for the most part. Those are the things that I would use. It's all kind of the same saying. Not the same meaning, but the same saying that we would use today. Well, I'm glad you're here, Dwayna. Yes, that, that's a true one, Stevie. That is, you're right. It's actually by and large, Mandy. It was just a muck in the DSM, but it's no longer used. As a diagnosable syndrome. Did they change it to something else or did they just remove it all together, Chris? Because I've seen some people go crazy and just go out. I mean, they may not use the amok as a reason to do it, but they do some pretty crazy things. I was just thinking the other day, I'm 65 years old. And in the last 65 years, the world has made such great strides in such good ways and actually even more in evil ways. So it's it's what it is. And we, we'll come through on the other side. The next one is called the third degree. And I listen to a, it's called The Lost Symbol by Dan Brown. It's another one in those series he did. But it's very good. It's all about the Masons and the 33rd degree. But this is only about the 3rd degree. It says it relates to various degrees of murder in criminal order. A criminal code. It could be derived from the Freemasons as their member undergo various degrees to become the 3rd degree or Master Masons. So I guess they have to ask, uh, you know, go through a lot of trials and questions and doing this and doing that and doing something else in order to become the third degree in the Masons. I don't know. They're secretive groups, so 
We won't know. Next is actions speak louder than words. And that's the truth. That is the truth. Sometimes you can just look at somebody. My kids, my grandkids, we was in, I'll tell this little story. I probably told it before and we'll tell it again. We was down at the beach one time when a hurricane had hit down in the lower part and we stayed in the upper part. And my three granddaughters, the oldest ones, was down in the basement. We was all getting ready to go somewhere and we was waiting on them to get dressed. And uh, we done went in and told them. And I went in the second time to tell them. And when I got to the top of the steps and I hollered at them, Shayla come out and I said, Shayla, that's two. Man, she flew in there and told those girls to get dressed and get out. The grandma's already got two and she's got the look. And they'll tell you, don't mess with grandma when she got the look. But it just, you know, kids. I love them. It uh, the, means more inclined to do than to talk. And sometimes that's right. You're, you would rather get up and do something than to talk about doing something. Um, that way you get it done and over with. But me, I'll sit around and think about getting up and doing these dishes in this kitchen sink for 20 minutes. I got three dishes in that kitchen sink. Three dishes. Like, well, you can wait. No, you cannot do. I'll sit and talk myself right in to get them to do those three dishes. Now, I might not do anything else house cleaning, but those dishes are going to get done. It says to point out the hypocrisy of someone who talks about doing. Yep. Or to acknowledge that a good deed was done without bragging. That would be cool. They removed it all together. <laughs> what was the last one called? Let's see which one you got. Okay, the last one was actions speak louder than words. The next one is better late than never. And I did, I said this a lot of times when I would be late to go out to Janet's or up Mom's or something. I said, well, it's better late than never, not realizing what that meant. It says it's better to arrive late than never to arrive at all. Now that has two meanings. One, something could happen to you and you don't get to get somewhere. Or two, you could have simply forgot and you just didn't come at all. So you, and didn't call it anything. It's a little disrespectful to the person that's invited you. So always, at least, if you can't be somewhere, call and let them know that you're, you're not going to be able to be there. There was a, a quote in there that said, For better than never is late. Never to succeed would be too long a period. So... The last one, I would, this is the last one that I'll just give you the background to. The rest of them are just the meanings. And I'll go till we hit, well, it's only three more minutes. Yay, guys. <clears throat> this one is come hell or high water. And I've, I've seen that. I mean, I've actually said that. Um, I'm going to do this come hell or high water, which means I'm going to get it accomplished no matter what comes up in my way. But the original statement come from when the cowboys used to drive their cattle through high water of the rivers or through the continuous problems of like the desert or the woods or the Indians or whatever. Whatever they come in through would be the hell they were going through. And then when they come to a river that was super, super high, they'd still herd those cattle right through them to the other side and hope they didn't lose any. So I thought that was pretty good. I still say it, but it won't be in that reference because to be that hard on something, I got to do one more. No, we can't stop on 13. <laughs> yeah, does anybody have one and want to see if I got the answers to? I'll go through another 
five more, man. Well, let's see, 13. I'll go through another seven more, end on 20. The next one is bite the bullet. It means to get something over because it is inevitable. So no matter what you do, you're going to have to do that tour like me. I'm going to have to do those dishes at some point in time. So just bite the bullet and get those dishes done. Or if you've got to mow your grass or you got to weed your garden, or water your garden, or you have to go out and clean your car because you took it and got it all muddy. You know, whatever it is you know you're going to have to do in the long run, if you just bite the bullet and go ahead and get it done, you're in good shape. The next one is something called a dime a dozen. And I know I've heard more people saying this, some in a derogatory term like, you know, they're, they're a dime a dozen. Why are you stressing over this one? Just means that it's something that's common. Something that you could get a whole lot of, but they're not really expensive. But that's just the way some people, and some people don't use it in a good term, but that's, that's what the meaning is. Just means something that's common. Here's one. I know I've, I've said this, I said, don't beat about the bush, and that's true. It just means to to avoid saying what you mean, usually because it's uncomfortable. Now, that beat about the bush, don't beat about the bush means go ahead and say it, get it over with. If the consequences are somebody's going to get mad at you, they would get more mad at you if you, one, didn't tell them or told them a lie. People can get over a lot of things, a lot, even a lot of hurtful things, if you're truthful with them and you maintain truthfulness with them. Then they will go forward. When you say something, they might get mad in the short run, but the long run, they'll be back. Did you get that one, Mandy, beat about the, beat about the bush? Thirteenth lucky for you, Edwina. You know, I was born not on Friday the thirteenth, but I was born on Tuesday the thirteenth, the thirteenth of May. And sometimes that old thirteenth comes on a Friday. So far, I haven't had any issues with it. This one's called a Rolling Stone Gathers No Moss. A quote from it says, People who are always moving with no roots in one place or another then avoid the responsibility or cares. So, that pretty much means that if you keep on the move, that, that uh, moss can't, get, can't catch up with you or any other responsibilities or anything else that you might incur if you stay a little while. Chrissy, I don't know if you know, I got my mama cup. See, that was four... Yeah, four more. Okay, got three more to go. <clears throat> Next one is beggars cannot be choosers. This just means that you shouldn't complain about the type or quality of help that is offered. And I agree with that 100%. Somebody might know not know the quality of work or not do the quality of work that you do. But if they're offering to help, there has to be something in that long line of stuff that you're doing that you could acknowledge their offer and go ahead and say, yeah, could you do this for me? Something that helps out them because they think they're helping you. They are helping you in the long run, but you don't have to be, no, I got this. I'm good. Because then you, you get less people offering to help. And when you really need help doing something, it's not as likely they're going to be offered. They'll say, well, they don't need my help for anything. Okay, now this one I use a lot. Because somebody will ask me a question, and I, I could not. Either I don't know it in the moment that they ask, or I don't know it at all. And it says, your guess is as good as mine, which basically means I have no idea. None. So, 
that one, that got one more, Mandy? Yeah. Okay, this is the, I'll leave this one as being the last one. Like I said, I've got all these other ones. But I just will keep them for my reference. I'm going to put one on each day uh, or in each week in my planner. If you all have watched my planner videos, you'll see there's one little corner down in my planner that I just put, um, I mean, put like flowers or whatever. And I usually put a quote. I'm going to take one of these, not the answer to it, but just the staying, and I'm going to make them up on my Cricut, and I'm going to put those in the middle of my planner. So if you all want to see any new ones, just go look out and watch my planner video, and you'll be able to see each one of them every week. And if there's one that you need to know what I have as an answer for it, you know, just send me an email or text message or something. This last one is, and I know almost every one of you all have said this at some point in time. So you can say that again. Just simply means that you agree with whatever somebody is saying that it's tr it true to the best of your ability. Like, you know, you might say, it's hot outside today. And they say, you can say that again. And, there, and therefore... You'd be right. Because <laughs> today I was here with I didn't I don't open my back door because little Mr. Samuel likes to go that way and uh, UPS guy had to leave a package sitting out in the middle of the driveway. <laughs> so I don't open that door. He can still go out the front door and around the house, but by that time I'll be to the door and look to see if I holler at him. He comes right back. He don't. He's not threatening or anything. He wants him to play with him. But you know when you're when you deal with so many dogs out on the road, you don't know if they're the good ones or the not good ones. So I just as soon Sam stayed in the house and then I'll have him bring it up, put it on the porch, and I'll go on the porch and get it, bring it in the house, and take it to Sean's room, because ninety percent of it's all Sean's. <laughs> all right, guys. Does anybody have anything that they want to say? Did you, was, did you think it was good? If you have an idea for a future one, um, please, you know, just leave me a comment saying, hey, could you do this next time? You know, what have you thought about this? You know, anything like that. Because I love, Chrissy gave me a lot of good things, which I haven't went through that whole list. And then, um. I keep coming up with little bits and little bits of that, but I'd like to do something on something that you would like to hear, as well as what I like to research, because I like to research anything. I should have been a research person back in the day, because I love to do that. Not to mention it gives me a very good reason just to sit on the couch. <laughs> All right, guys. Y'all have a wonderful day, and we, don't forget, we are having... We are going to our second craft fair in St. Albans at the St. Albans High School Cafeteria. We'll be open from 10 to 4 this Saturday. So if you get a chance, if you're down in that area or something, we'll probably take a few photos and post them out on Facebook so you can see you know, what's going on, how we got everything set up. So if you get a chance, stop by and see us. All right, guys. Y'all have a wonderful night. Bye-bye.